Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to do the Panda Palette for 2021 intro. So I have talked a little bit about what I wanted to pan for 2021 for a few months now since like I came back. I think I'm filming this on the 3rd, right? Yeah, January 3rd. So I'm a few days late but I have been prepping this palette for a few days as well, like four days. Life with a baby that won't sleep at the moment. It's not very effective for me. Let me just get into it. I'm pretty sure if you know, I wanted to work on my Too Faced Chocolate Bar that I did as a panda palette for 2018, I believe. I finished like half of it. I hit pan on most of the shades and I ended on a high note, I think. Then I have worked on it on and off since and I thought this year is the year that I want to get it done. Then I wanted to prep it, like repress the shades that wasn't that was really hard so I could get through them easier. Um, and then my Franken brain Franken shadow brain came over me and I franken like half of the palette. Let me show you what my palette looks like so we can compare it from now on until the end of the year and let's talk about the shades. So this is where I am going to start off with my palette and as you can see and if you know the chocolate bar it is looking rather different than the uh, original. I will talk about what I have done and what my plans are for the shades. So the first shade up here is Gilded Ganache. When I did my panda palette, I didn't care for that shade. It was muddy and it wasn't the, the olive tone that I really wanted to be. So I thought this is the perfect opportunity to try to franking it to a shadow that might be doable for me to work on. And I think I have done that. This franking shade is like, uh, a few different uh, greens from a blush tribe palette that I tried to uh, hit pan on and light beige shade I think as well um, so because I wanted to uh, repress that into here I had some left that couldn't fit in the pan so I thought maybe I will just try to mix it in with this one and make it lighter so it's not as green and muddy so it's a little bit more green and olive toned and I do think that helped. It is more green than before and it is so much more me. I have high hopes for that shade to work now. The next shade is Milk Chocolate. I have just repressed that. Um, I didn't add anything in because I actually really like that shade and it did go rather fast without me repressing it because it had um, okay pan, I just repressed it. These two shades are the same shadows. They are a mixture of Triple Fudge, Black Frost Trouble, I have the names up here, Black Frost Truffle and Semi Sweet and uh, Can uh, Chia Cordial. Chia Cordial and Semi Sweet were so hardly pressed that it wasn't even funny. It didn't, they, did, they didn't have that much pigment anymore because they were so hardly pressed and maybe a little bit dry. This palette I bought in 2015, so it is rather old. I just knew I couldn't finish them this year and I don't want to hang on to this palette a few years more. So I just thought maybe I will just repress these so a little bit more loosely so they don't, uh, they are not as hard. Black Frost Travel I didn't like. It was a very deep purple red shade with tons of glitter that didn't show up and it it was a little bit patchy so I thought okay I will mix that one with semi sweet and uh, chia cordial because those shades are so similar and so dark uh, I will use them in the same way anyway and triple fudge I mainly used in my brows but I have so many browns in my collection for my eyebrows as a brow, brow powder so I thought let's mix all of those four shades and I had so much shadow left but I didn't care for the rest. I only wanted to fill like max two pans and I did. So I thought that is more than enough outer corner shades for a year. This shade I didn't touch at all. It is Salted Camel and as you can see it has pan and 
I did repress it, so there isn't much left. So I just thought, let's just skip that one. This one is marzipan mixed in with a little bit of a highlighter, I think. Yes, this is much more metallic now and even prettier than the OG mask pen. So I'm really happy that I mixed it in with some highlighter. I mainly used the sleek highlighter palette to make the the shadows more shimmery and stuff. That marzipan shade is so much prettier now than it was before and as you can see it is quite shiny. This shade is a mixture of some of this white shade. It is a single essence shadow. Um, and some beige shades from a Morphe palette, I think. Um, I mixed that a long time ago in like July or something. Um, and I wanted to make a shimmery brow bone highlight. It's not that shimmery. It's like a satin finish and it is really pretty on a brow bone to set that place because I don't set my eye primer. Sometimes I really consider doing that because I have so many beige shades and so little room around my brows. And I have a good dip in that shade. It was full to the rim like the other shades, but it has a good dip and I am wearing it down. So I'm not really concerned about that shade. It, it goes down. Then we have this one. This is Candy Violet mixed in with some purple highlighter from the Sleek palette. I don't remember what else. Uh, maybe a little bit of marzipan actually. Not quite sure. But that is a very beautiful lavender shiny shiny lavender color now and I really really like it as a lit shade Um, it is full to the rim so I'm that concerns me a little bit but I really like the color now so because I like the color I do think it is easier to get through Um, because candy violet was it was horrible uh, on its own it wasn't pigmented it was patchy and a little bit grayish in the undertone not really purple <laughs> But this way I like it more. Then we have Amaretto and this one I repressed uh, plus some uh, highlighter from the Sleek palette. So it was even more shimmery because Amaretto was going patchy. And maybe I was just going to let this palette go but I really... Yeah, it, uh, it was my first higher end palette so I'm a little bit sentimental that I was just going to check it. Um, I really wanted to try to make it work, <laughs> even though I'm not in for that that much. But I really like uh, Amaretto now. It has some highlighter in it and it is more shimmery. So maybe, or I hopefully, <laughs> it's hopefully p better now. This white shade, I really wanted some inner corner highlight because I didn't feel like I had that. It's just the remainder of the uh, white essence single shadow in snowflake that i've been working on for the past few years and um, that is just the remainder of that so i just pushed it into here to have it as an inner corner highlight because i really enjoy that then we have the green shade that i talked about i framed that uh, last summer as well um, with two greens from the paulina palette i do have a picture um, and a beige shade from Benefit uh, that I tried to use up last year but because it broke I just franken it with something and um, I it made this pretty green shade and um, I could have used it today but I didn't, I used other green shades I didn't really work on it for the fall time obviously so uh, hopefully I can get a lot of use out of it in the spring and summer time this year and hopefully finish it this one is a mixture of three shadows from a W7 palette that I just used for my brows so I just mix those and a little bit of a Quartrice uh, brow, brown shadow from last year that I tried to pan um, in a single. So that is that. I mainly want to use that in my brows. So I thought it was a good placement just to put it in this palette so I could have it with me all the time and see it every single day and not have a, a compact on the side to open and use, you know. So the last shade down here is a big one. It's like two of these pants as well. It is a mixture of hazelnut, uh, hot chocolate, there's a little bit of creme brulee, um that I frankened a long time ago and there's some highlighter, highlighter in it and some orange and yellow shades from my panda palette from last year so I just put them all in here. I'm not the biggest fan of cool toned cool tones but some of these are just on the edge 
from warm to cool tone so I can make them work and make them doable for me and not get bored and I do think having the purple and the green is is good for me to not get entirely bored of the palette the three empty slots is something that I wanted to keep empty if I wanted to repress something else in it or mix the shades again so I thought that was going to be a good thing um, I do think I have some crease shades, outer corner shades, lid shades, inner corner everything like that and a pop of color so I will not I don't think I will get bored of this and because I'm going to do pan those eyeshadows as well this year I think this is going to be a good companion palette to those shadows even though I don't know what I'm going to get yet I haven't filmed it <laughs> so goals for next month I don't know what they will be I will definitely incorporate at least one or two shadows into the looks every single time I wear makeup hopefully I can wear more makeup than I have yet <laughs> It always comes down to Baby Girl Snaps because she was really good uh, for the first two months of her life to like nap three to four hours in a row. Now she don't. <laughs> it's like one hour, one and a half max. Um, she's really hard to get to sleep right now. I don't blame her. She is three months, so that is like a tiger loop, I want to say in English. Tear spring in Danish. She's just seeking comfort and <coughs> sleeping troubles, right? Hopefully she will get into a routine soon again so we can make something <laughs> in the daytime when it's still light out because it is January, it's winter, it's Denmark, Scandinavia is really dark in the winter time. <laughs> Well, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video and are looking forward for my Panda palette for 2021. It is still a little bit weird to say that, but in the beginning of every year, it's really weird to say a new yearly number. Yeah, we just need to get used to it. Hopefully 2021 is going to be so much better than 2020. Even though 2020 for me was not that bad, to be quite honest. Uh, we were very lucky in Denmark and I got my baby girl, I got pregnant. I really loved that part of 2020. So hopefully 2021 is the year where I get more of a routine into baby girl so I can wear more makeup and film a lot more. And being a mom is hard and so amazing at the same time. I hope you guys enjoyed and want to follow along on my journey this year and look out for my other panning videos and intros I am going to do soon and yeah hopefully you are taking care until my next video. Bye!